other day, I, I was working pretty late, and I was about to skip meal. But then I figured I can just use my phone to order some uh, food online and just ship directly to me. And when I'm not feeling so well, I can book an online appointment for the doctor and come visit me at my own place. All of those things would have never happened five years ago in Vietnam. So that you can see that the growth uh, speed of technology in Vietnam has growing so fast. And how do we become a part of this movement through the learning and teaching of codes? My name is Leah, and I'm the founder and coding instructor at Cat Can Code. And yes, I can teach a cat to code. <laughs> uh, but what I mean is that anyone can learn to code. And with that, we have inspired more than 1,000 young Vietnamese uh, just like you um, to learn about basic programming and understanding tech at the core. And I'm also collaborated with local tech community and I also lead several STEM initiatives for women at the US consulate uh, at the American Center as well. So this is one of our workshop about machine learning at the American Centers as part of the Women History Month um, last month in March. So why I'm doing what I'm doing in Vietnam? So when I first came back here, I've been to so many tech um, seminars and conference about women's STEM, and then I start to ask the audience, how many of you actually code? And it's kind of uh, strike me that only very few, especially women, who are actually picking up coding. And I myself, when I go to some uh, very technical seminars with Google, I'm very much the only person in the room together with um, other males co college. So I figure I should do something different. Just like when you're instructing the computer, you're putting lines of codes. The computer don't understand whether you're a guy or a girl. It won't just send back like error message if you think it's wrong, or when it's right, it's follow your instructions. So I believe that programming and teaching programming is a great way to uh, empower people and to uh, bring more diversity and inclusiveness, especially in the tech industry. And what's more, I want to bring uh, technical knowledge to further uh, into the remote area in Vietnam. And uh, with the help with technology, we actually were able to show children from remote area um, what's out there in the world. At the very least, they will understand that there are many other options. There's so much more out there that they can start first with maybe the web technology, or maybe something very abstract. It's like machine learning or artificial intelligence. So that leads me to my first point. What I cannot create, I do not understand. This is very, my favorite quote ever. So if you think about this, in Vietnam, we have very strong startup movement, right? So basically, if you want to open a business, you have to have a website. Or you're going to ask someone to build a website for you. As a business owner, we have to understand what exactly the structure of the website is before we can instruct or talk to the developer about certain abstract features that you want for your business. Just like in my paintings, for cetera, if I want to learn to paint, I have to first understand color theory, compositions, and then I practice a lot, and then I come up with this painting. How many of you know about these musical instruments? Yes? Um, this is a traditional Vietnamese uh, dang chen. So when I first start to like, play this instrument, I struggle a lot because I have to first experiment different notes coming out of the string of this instrument, and then I can later on learn several uh, songs I can start playing myself. When it comes to piano, you have to understand the notes. You have to understand music theory, rhythm, melodies, and so much more before you can compose your own songs. So it's the same with technology. You have to understand how to do uh, basic coding, so having at least the first few lines of codes before you can actually understand I've heard so many buzzwords about blockchain technology, artificial intelligence, machine learning, but how many of us really understand it at the core? So in, in our workshops, we always want our students to build the first lines of code, to examine what's really inside certain websites, and I want them to recreate 
the first World Wide Web. This is actually the first site that been created 30 years ago by uh, Sir Tim Bernoulli. And then they can move on and start building their own things. And then they can understand what it really is before they can go on and create something more with values for themselves and for the community. And that leads me to another point, coding as the medium for creations. How many of you here have a cell phone or use a computer? Can you raise your hands? It's like everyone, right? There's 7.8 billion people in this world. It's actually more now. But there are only 21 million coders. So that's basically 0.27% of the world populations. And among all of those, there are leaders in this tech industry. And very few of them. And you all know, like, there's Mark from Facebook, there's Bill Gates from Microsoft, there are Tim Bernoulli, the, the founders of the World Wide Web. And they all kind of control everything, the technology that you're using in your daily life. And if you don't understand it at the core, there must be something really missing. So back to Vietnam. So Vietnam is known to um, offer quite high, high, high quality engineers for developed countries such as um, the US, Singapore, the UK. Even our country ourselves, next year we'll be lacking up one million developers. So you see, if you participate in this train and you want to be a part of it, that's a huge potential out there for you. So when I first get into tech, I start to look around and I observe a lot. And I found out that when it's come to tech, there's multiple layers of consumptions and creations. And maybe this is just my perspective. Maybe you have something different. But let's, let's look at it. So when I think about using technologies to consume, I'm thinking about browsing through Facebook, watching YouTube videos, reading news. And then the next layer is that you actually create something using editing software. Say, Microsoft Word, when you're editing text, right? Writing something. Or um, if you know about Adobe Creative Suits, such as InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop, then you start to create your own graphic. And then the next layer is that the people, developers, they actually use um, they create those software applications that you use. You're using the mobile application on your phones or a desktop application so, so you can use that to create something. And then the next one is actually the person who built the IDE. IDE is the integrated development environments to develop those applications. And basically this is how it's like for most developers when they develop software. And when I do more of the observations, I found out that Consumption, reinforced creations, and vice versa. Say, when you're here, you listen to what we're sharing on the stage. It's basically one-way consumption, right? And then you can come back and say, maybe it's inspiring me to do something different. And then I want to start to do something different. I actually create something. Same with me when I want to start um, painting, for example. I look up on like inspiration from uh, different famous artists through YouTube videos or uh, tutorials on how to paint those. And then I come back, um, say my koi fish painting, and then I come back and then I realize, okay, I want nine koi fish in this painting. I want this favorite color of mine to be in it. And then I create those artwork and I share with everyone else. And then funny enough, my uh, goddaughter, um, she's uh, the daughter of my very close friend in Netherlands. She saw my painting and she asked, Miss Leah, like, how can I create such a fish painting just like you? Can you teach me how to do that? You know, so once your creation is out there, you can start to inspire other people to create something different as part of their consumption and they move on to create those ripple effects. So what I want you to bring home with after this presentation is that if you think about the way you consume, if you think about how you create, and what's your consumption versus creation's ratio. Think about the smallest thing that you do in your daily work, something that you can create values for other people. And I think that's the most important thing is you start to take actions to create. Thank you. <laughs>